South Wales, May 6th, 2001. 31-year-old Jason Williams hasn't been seen for 12 days. And he certainly would have been in touch at least by phone. Police arrest two men, secure witnesses and obtain damning DNA evidence. But this is no open and shut case. There was no body. Could Jason still be alive? With the police unable to find him, his family turned to a local psychic. But will the hard science of the police or supernatural skills find Jason first? quiet commuter town on the south coast of Wales. A person doesn't have to be missing for very long before somebody notices. Unemployed father Jason Williams has not been seen for four days. His sister Julie is worried by his lack of contact. Jason was a very family oriented person, very devoted to his son. Um, he was very much a hands-on dad. He certainly would have been in touch at least by phone to speak to his son. So that was when the alarm bells first were raised. Detective Chief Inspector Ken Isaac has lived and worked in the area for most of his life. An area where serious crime is extremely rare. The missing person report in relation to Jason Williams commenced in the village of Lacha. There were general house-to-house -house investigations and speaking to his family and associates. So you expected from the early stage of the missing person inquiry that he would be found uh, within a week or so? Most missing persons in the UK are found within three days. After a week, the police still have no definite leads. The family grows desperate. I'm leaving messages on his mobile phone for him. Um, obviously, every time the phone rings, you wonder, is it the police ringing with news? But uh, everybody kept an open mind that perhaps uh, he's gone visiting somebody out of the area. After nine days and with little information from the police, Julie takes advice from a relative and contacts psychic Sue Evans to see if her worst fears are true. Psychics have the ability to speak to spirit so that if that missing person is dead, then psychics would be able to communicate with that dead spirit. If she was a genuine article and could do what she said she could do, she might come up with a piece of information that would lead to finding him, so... There wasn't any decision to make, really. Right then. Sue claims that boss? tarot cards focus her psychic intuition and will allow her to discover what happened to Jason. I use the tarot, like some people use a crystal ball or tea leaves, and it's a way of me linking into their lives and finding out what's happened to them. To me, the tarot is how I communicate with spirit as well as being able to predict. Out of the 78 picture cards, Sue turns over the image that most strikes fear into those not familiar with the tarot, the death card. The death card means change. It doesn't always mean death, but it does mean change. The cards did show us that there was trauma around Jason, but we weren't absolutely positive as to what had happened. But it does indicate that something has happened. Sue says she can sense a disturbance around Jason, but is unable to contact him in the spirit world. This is a ray of hope to Julie that her brother may not be dead after all. Twelve days after his disappearance, Sue tries to contact Jason again. She figures that where one psychic has failed, two will succeed. She calls upon her sister Kathleen. We're asking spirit to help us. Sue uses remote viewing, an unproven phenomenon that psychics claim allows them to witness events from a spirit's point of view. When I remote view, it's like watching a video or a television. You see details. You can then watch as if you're standing there as a witness. Sue claims she is transported back to the murder scene with Jason as her spirit guide. I found myself in a, in a living room and there was an older gentleman there and a younger gentleman as well as Jason. What the psychic doesn't know is that her visions seem to match details revealed by a local man who has been brought in by police after claiming he witnessed the murder. 
Alan Sinfield says he was there when Jason was viciously attacked by 27-year-old Richard Davis. All of a sudden it erupted like a balloon going pop. And there was a struggle. Davis pulled Jason Williams onto the floor, uh, straddled him. And he was just sticking the knife in him in his chest and things in some kind of a vengeful, nasty way. With no apparent knowledge of Sinfield's confession, Sue describes an older man and a younger man in the room with Jason, then a drunken murder. She has no doubts what this information is all about. Jason wants to ensure his killer is brought to justice. It's 12 days since 31-year-old Jason Williams was last seen alive in Lahore, South Wales. This missing person's case takes a dramatic turn when a 57-year-old local man, Alan Sinfield, is interviewed by police. This was turned into a, a murder investigation, primarily from the disclosure by Sinfield to the police, saying that Richard Davis have, had killed uh, Jason Williams and he was a party to the disposal of his body. For 24 hours, these details are not released even to Jason's family. Yet somehow, psychic Sue Evans' vision of the murder appears to match Sinfield's confession. The police remain open-minded over what has happened to Jason. And we weren't sure at that stage, was he involved in the murder? Did he alone do the murder and blame Richard Davis? And they were things that uh, we were hoping to clarify. Richard Davis was also arrested uh, that, that night, and he was given an opportunity to uh, give his version of events. Davis protests his innocence and claims that although he had an argument with Jason, he left Sinfield's house with him still alive. The police act fast and send in forensic teams to Sinfield's house. Now both Ken Isaacs and Sue have terrible news to deliver. One of the most difficult jobs for me was uh, speaking to the family and telling them that uh, he had been killed. Initially when we heard that he'd, you know, been stabbed, it happened like probably two streets from where I lived. Um, it was very strange to think that all that was going on in such a short distance from your home and you didn't know anything about it. We knew that these people had been charged with his murder and I didn't feed that information to Sue because if I did that, I would never be able to know whether she was genuine or not. Sue tells Julie about her vision of Jason being in a room with two men and the drunken stabbing. Her details match the facts that the police have revealed to Julie earlier. With regard to the information she's come up with, um, the accuracy of it, I can't logically tell you how she could come up with all those details. Jason's spirit also seems to be providing Sue with more clues that could bring his killer to justice. And Jason was pointing out that there would have been parts of the room splattered by the blood and some had splattered onto a radiator. Julie is won over and approaches the police about working with the psychic, but they refuse the offer. My take on the psychic involvement is that uh, a psychic did, did not assist the investigation. And to my knowledge, South East Police has not used a psychic uh, to help to prove uh, any inquiry. Yeah, I think, you know, police have their hands tied by procedure, by budgets, by professional guidelines and, and standards. I mean, families are not tied by any of those things. Frustrated by the police's response, Sue and Julie launch their own psychic hunt for the body, led by the spirit of Jason. Without a body, the police could not be confident of convicting anyone for murder. At Sinfield's house, the forensic team have a breakthrough. They removed back the carpet and uh, we found there was two large pools of blood with and under the radiator were some small dots uh, of blood. Sue claims she predicted there would be blood close to a radiator. For her believers, this is proof that the psychic has access to the world of the paranormal. The Psychometry is a controversial technique that supposedly allows seers to explore psychic imprints of objects touched by victims. Will this help Sue find Jason's body? She calls in her psychic troops. We were asked to sit within the circle. 
And then I think a photograph and some things of Jason's, like a T-shirt that were passed around. It helps when you have more people in circle because each person's got a different psychic ability. So all these combined builds up the whole picture. So we saw that the body had been loaded into a van and taken up towards the Brecon Beacons. We saw the body being left very unceremoniously, but there was a tree that had been, the branch of a tree had broke. Are we anywhere near where your body is? Jason showed us a Celtic cross. The unique thing about it was, is that he said there were three of these crosses. And she said, this is near the spot where he was put. I just keep saying it's so obvious you're missing me. Near there, that's where his body was. DCI Ken Isaac knows that without Jason's body, a murder conviction is practically impossible. It was important uh, for us to recover Jason's body uh, for two reasons, primarily uh, to, to prove the case uh, of murder. There's been very few convictions or murder convictions where a body hasn't been recovered. And secondly, uh, for, for the family, so they could have uh, closure on the case. At the same time, psychic Sue Evans has launched her own search. She claims that she is in touch with the spirit of Jason and he has given her clues that will lead to the location of his body. Where we were in terms of the jigsaw at this stage was that we had more pieces to put together to build the whole picture. We needed to know where the body might be to help find Jason. Jason's sister is convinced by Sue's powers and asks the police to use her supernatural skills but in the UK, busy murder investigation teams often discount the work of psychics. While Sue and Julie embark on their own hunt for more clues, the police act upon Sinfield's admission that he helped Davis dispose of the body. Following uh, Richard Davis killing uh, Jason Williams, uh, they've wrapped his body up uh, in black plastic bags, and he and Sinfield went on the Brecon Beacons at looking for a place uh, to dispose of Jason's uh, body. Assigned this near impossible task of finding Jason's body in over 500 square miles of moorland is search expert John Williams. The area is so big, unless we had sort of some indication as to where Jason was, then we were literally clutching at straws. What the police have that Sue doesn't is the help of one of the men who dumped Jason's body. We drove quite a few hundred miles over the couple of the days I was with him. I can recall him saying that they drove onto a, a grass verge at some point. And on my left-hand side, I could see some uh, tire marks that were on the grass verge. I looked uh, further along the road from where the tire marks were, and I could see a white bag. Uh, on top of the bag, there was a stone. And uh, it, it just seemed strange. This was in the middle of nowhere. There was absolutely nothing about them. Why is a stone suddenly being put on top of a, a carrier bag? Sue's psychic investigation has already shown her Jason's body dumped on the Brecon beacons. Will her visions of Celtic crosses and a broken tree turn out to be meaningful? The first thing I saw at this point, uh, I could see that this area uh, was flattened. Uh, and that was quite, quite obvious. You could then see um, the tree trunk here. And uh, you could see that some bark had been was removed from the main sort of trunk area. It just looked as if somebody put their foot in it. I was, I was more than satisfied that this was a scene, more than satisfied. As Sue predicted, it seems that Jason has been dumped near a broken tree. Now police meticulously search for his body or further evidence. It was literally a shoulder to shoulder, slow time search from the roadway into where, where I felt Jason was, uh, was placed. For 12 hours, police search experts painstakingly examine an area that is almost the size of a football pitch. Miraculously, they discover a human hair. He came up trumps because his hair was found interwoven with uh, grass and bracken. For that particular scene to find his hair was fantastic. The hair is sent off for DNA testing to secure a match with Jason. After 24 hours of searching, the police are forced to acknowledge the worst. There was no body. Um, we, I carried a cursory search, but there was no body. Um, it was quite 
frustrating, really, when um, they came away empty-handed. Amazingly, Sue's vision of the broken tree has turned out to be accurate, but somebody has been back to the site and Jason's body is gone. Without it, a murder conviction is a near impossible task for the police. Over the following months, the police scour the Brecon beacons using helicopters, dive teams, and sniffer dogs, every method available to them, except the powers of a psychic. Julie believes that where the police have failed, Sue will succeed. I feel it's definitely near these three Celtic crosses. So we decided to go in the car and go up and have a look for ourselves to see if we could find any of these landmarks that Jason was showing us. As we were driving along, we rounded a corner and um, I spotted a church behind some high sort of conifer trees. And we found a Celtic cross. There was a Celtic cross there. And as we approached it, um, I noticed that I could just see a Celtic cross in the um, in the grounds, and I said to say, there's one Celtic cross there. Julie turned around and said, look, behind, and there was two other Celtic crosses. So these were the three Celtic crosses we felt that Jason was showing us. Clues and the jigsaws were coming together and we just had to trust that he'd guide us to him. In South Wales, two very different investigations raced to find the body of murder victim Jason Williams. The police searched the Brecon beacons but find no corpse. Jason's sister Julie turns to psychic Sue Evans. She is certain that Jason will be found near the three Celtic crosses that they have discovered in an old Welsh churchyard. The fact that we actually found three Celtic crosses in one churchyard, which I think is quite unusual anyway. You could feel his spirit around you, and you would feel a nice warmth. I thought about it, and I really can't think how logically she could come up with as much accurate information as, as she has. Mm. I would never have known these were you, and I do feel that Jason did draw us towards these to show he's in this area. Sue is certain that Jason is nearby. Julie supplies the police with the psychic's vision, but they prefer not to act on information allegedly from beyond the grave. So I'm used to them being sceptical. I'm used to not being acknowledged by some of them, even when what I've set out to do has happened. But I feel Julie did feel a lot of frustration because she'd be going there and saying, well, look, we're doing this, we're doing that, why aren't you helping? The police have the confession of Sinfield and strong evidence pointing towards Davis as the murderer. But without Jason's body, taking Davis to court is risky. A conviction secured without a body is virtually unprecedented. Uh, my understanding that there's uh, been less than a dozen convictions in British judicial history, or it was at that stage, for a conviction of murder without a body. So we were, we were mind mindful of that. The police meticulously piece together a package that aims to prove that Jason is dead even without his body. It includes vital information from the crime scene. We, we got an interpretation to the blood. There was a large pool of blood. So any, anyone uh, would have lost that amount of blood would have been seriously ill at that particular time. So that, that helped to support the fact that Jason Williams didn't leave the scene that, that night. The hair discovered in the forest comes back with a DNA match with Jason. What Sinfield was saying all along seems to be true. Then detectives interview Davy's girlfriend, Jody Sinfield, and she confirms that he admits to stabbing Jason. The police decide to gamble on the skills of their forensic team, and in February 2002, Davis and Sinfield are put in front of a court of law. Sue's claims that she has spoken to the spirit world will also be put to the test. It was spooky, for want of a better word. Um, as I say, when certain things were coming up, you could actually feel the hairs on the back of your neck going up. Julie claims that Sue continued to provide her family with visions of the murder, including details of the part that Davis played, the nature of the attack, and how Jason's body was moved. Now this information corresponds with what Julie hears in court. They realized that a lot of the information that I'd given them 
was accurate, bang on. This proved that I was on the right track all the way through. The thorough police investigation leaves no room for doubt. Sinfield gets two years for perverting the course of justice. Richard Davis is found guilty of Jason Williams' murder and sentenced to life. He continues to appeal against this judgment. Sue is certain that Jason is near the Three Crosses, and with police help she could find his body, but the controversy over the intervention of psychics and clairvoyance in criminal investigations remains. Well, I feel that psychics are another tool that the police can use. I would like to see every police headquarters having psychics on their books. For his father. I think she's been psychic from a child. To her, that is normal, and she, I get the impression she can't understand why we find it so amazing, because for her, it's fact. Sue's relationship with Jason has had a lasting effect on her. It proves that there's life after death, and it proves that your loved ones care for you after they've died, and that they still have emotions and feelings, even though they're dead. I will always keep looking for him, and I will always be there for him, for as long as I can. Swing with the King. It's all Elvis, all night long. With a revealing look at his first love. He was a marvelous kisser. His wife and marriage, and the Memphis Mafia, his closest confidants. Even supernatural Elvis sightings. Elvis is...